Welcome back to World History. Today, we learn about Egypt in Chapter 4. Let's get into it. Okay, so today we're going to have, with the beginning of almost every chapter, what are we going to need to learn about? We're going to need to learn some geography. Make sure you know where the Nile is and a special little region of the Nile called the Delta. Okay? Uh, we're going to talk, we're going to compare and contrast the physical geography of Egypt with the physical geography of Mesopotamia. And then we're going to see how that um, grows different cultures, what's similar, what's different. Okay? Make sure you understand where Upper and Lower Egypt, where they are. It's a little bit confusing at first, but then once you understand, no problem. You'll get it. Oh, uh, we got Menes, okay? One of the first, if the first pharaoh that unites everybody. We'll talk about him. And then we're going to talk about, the, this is all taking place during the Old Kingdom. So in Mesopotamia, you had different groups. Sumerians, Akkadians, Babylonians, etc. In Egypt, you pretty much have the same group, but we divide them into the Old, Middle, and New Kingdom. Why is that? What protects them? What helps them stay united and flourish? We'll get into it. Okay? And then, of course, the pyramids. We got a small video about the pyramids today and a big video about the pyramids next time. You got to talk about the pyramids. So let's go. You need to know where the most fertile soil in Egypt was located. You need to know uh, the location of Upper and Lower Egypt. We talked about that. You should understand... Uh, the connections and the differences between Egypt and Kush. Probably not this lecture, that's probably next week, but we'll talk about it, okay? So, big picture, let's look at this map. These are the first human civilizations. We were in Mesopotamia, now we're in Egypt, all right? There's Egypt on the map, okay? The big red, it's a square enough, okay? Um, top corner of what continent? Africa, good job. All right, so you can find Egypt on a world map. Where is it now? Okay, it's right there. Where's the Tigris and Euphrates? They're over there. Okay, great. So here's Egypt again, and you can see the river that runs through it there. That's the Nile. You should be able to find the Nile on a map. Here's another picture showing the Nile. Also notice that the Nile goes into other countries besides Egypt. This will be a source of contention. Um, who's going to harness the Nile's power? Who's going to get to control it? We'll watch a little video about the GERD, which is a dam. Uh, we'll check it in, out in a minute. Okay, so physical geography, human geography. It's back. We love it. The river in Egypt is going to flood. What's the river called? The Nile. Okay, it's going to flood more predictably than the Tigris and the Euphrates. And so... The Egyptians are going to have a little bit more predictable life. It'll allow them to have a better view of the afterlife. This is part of the reason that they want to live forever as far as mummification. And, uh, you know, they just think that life is pretty good and it's just going to keep on getting good. And that's, in a, in ju you know, juxtaposed to the Mesopotamians where the life was either good or bad, love or war, this dichotomy. Okay, so here's the, the Nile River. You can see this triangle looking shape right there. That's the Delta. That's the Nile Delta. That's where you can get your food, you can grow your crops. It's the longest river in the world. Make sure you know where the Nile Delta is. Fantastic. Now this video is about the GERD. The Nile, the longest river in the world and each country that it passes through wants to harness its power. In Ethiopia, a monster of concrete and steel is emerging on the banks of the Nile. The country wants the Grand Renaissance Dam to be the driving force in its economic rebirth. It will be the largest hydroelectric dam in Africa and will ensure Ethiopia's energy independence in a country where electricity demand is rising by 30% each year. The problem the Nile is not just Ethiopia's, and it's causing concern downstream in Egypt, a nation that has long controlled the Nile's power with its impressive Aswan Dam. To understand the potential impact of the Ethiopian Dam, one has to go to the Nile Delta, 
It's the breadbasket of Egypt, home to 30 million people. Locals here worry for their whole way of life. When the dam will be finished, our lives will be a misery. With the water now I can look after my fields, but with this dam the situation will get worse. To cushion the blow, the Egyptian government has asked farmers to look for alternative crops, ones that aren't so greedy for water. Last year we had rice everywhere here, but today we are required to plant other crops that consume less water, like cotton and corn. Negotiations are underway with Sudan and Ethiopia to find a compromise. Egypt has proposed that the dam be filled over eight years to minimize the lower water levels in the river, but Ethiopia won't accept it taking longer than four. Okay, we'll keep an eye on that. Um, a lot of countries are building dams. There's a variety of reasons you want to control the Nile. It's historically been associated with Egypt. However, the Nile does not originate in Egypt. We'll talk more about that in a minute. Okay, um, what was the soil called that contained the nutrients for farming? Important soil? Silt. All right, good job. Okay, so we're getting into the physical geography that sort of protects Egypt. On the west, they'll have a giant desert. So they can't get attacked from the west very easily because you have to come through a giant desert. Well, why not just sail up the river and attack? You can a little bit, but you can't put a big boat on it because of these cataracts, all right? So the Nile has these cataracts, which are just rapids. You just know that that adds a level of protection, okay? You can't just zip right up there with a big boat and a big army and then surprise attack. Okay, here's where we get into Upper or Lower Egypt. This is Upper Egypt. This is Lower Egypt. And you go, what? On the map, that's upper, that's lower. What? I don't understand why that's wrong. Here, let me show you something, okay? Look at this. Water flows down, upper, lower. So check back on the map. The river's flowing into the Mediterranean. So the river's flowing from the high ground to the low ground, or from upper Egypt to lower Egypt. Does that make sense? We're not saying upper, lower, like you're looking at a piece of paper. We're saying upper, lower, like you're looking at the land level, upper Egypt flowing into lower Egypt and then into that sea, which is called what? The seahorse, exactly. I'm just kidding, the Mediterranean Sea. All right, very good, very good. Um, so Egypt starts off as upper and lower Egypt. Okay, you got two different kingdoms. And then Menes unites them. Sometimes he's called Neymar, by the way. Don't worry, your book calls him Menes, that's fine with me. But look at this cool hat. You can get the bowling ball or the bowling pin hat, or you can have the quail hat. And if you put them together, you get the bowling ball, pin, quail hat. That's not exactly historically accurate, those descriptions. But if they help you understand that you have upper Egypt, lower Egypt, and then when you put them together, you have a united Egypt. That's all I want you to see. So let's look at Lego Menace. Which crown is he wearing? Both, exactly. So there you go, Lego Menes rules both Upper Lego and Lower Lego Egypt. Perfect. Okay, by the way, he's the first, you know, he's the first pharaoh unites, um, unites the kingdoms. Who's the first emperor of Mesopotamia or the Akkadian Empire? Sargon, okay. Remember, these are just simple ways. You're going to need to know a couple of people, a couple of places, a couple of things. If I say he's the first blah, 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 yeah, that's a possible test question. All right. So what's a pharaoh? The absolute ruler of Egypt, basically God on earth, has all the power of a king and a god put together. But with power comes responsibility because... Although you rule with absolute authority, what if there's a major drought? What if all the crops fail? Whose fault is it? It's your fault. You're God King and now we're all starving. And so sometimes it can work out. It can be bad to be the Pharaoh sometimes. Okay, Old Kingdom. It's 2700 BC to 2200 BC roughly, okay? Old Kingdom Egypt. This is when they're gonna build the pyramids. Notice that the number's going down because we're moving towards zero. I know that that's kind of strange. 
Okay, so the Great Pyramid is built by the Pharaoh Khufu. I won't ask you the Pharaoh, we just, you can check out the Great Pyramid. It's awesome. In the Old Kingdom, Third Dynasty, okay, Egypt starts trading. And when you trade, you get wealthy. And they're gonna trade with their neighbors to the south in Nubia and in Kush. And they'll trade gold, ivory, slaves, different stones, stone materials. Okay, so let's watch this quick video about the pyramids. Pyramid of Khufu is the oldest and largest of the three pyramids in Giza, on the outskirts of Cairo in Egypt. It is believed the pyramid was built as a tomb for fourth dynasty Egyptian pharaoh Khufu, and was constructed over a 20-year period. The pyramid remained the tallest man-made structure in the world for nearly 4,000 years, unsurpassed until the spire of Lincoln Cathedral was completed in the 14th century. The Great Pyramid consists of an estimated 2.3 million limestone blocks. There have been varying scientific and alternative theories about the Great Pyramid's construction techniques. It is estimated that completing the building in 20 years would involve moving an average of more than one block into its place every five minutes, day and night. At completion, the Great Pyramid was covered by white casing stones that formed a smooth outer surface. What is seen today is the underlying core structure. Some of the casing stones that once covered the pyramid can still be seen around the base. The casing stones were fit together with extremely high precision. The mean opening of the joints was only half millimeter wide. The accuracy of the pyramid's workmanship is such that the four sides of the base have an average error of only 58 millimeters in length. The base is horizontal and flat to within 15 millimeters. There are three known chambers inside the Great Pyramid. The so-called Queen's and King's Chambers are higher up within the structure. The lowest chamber, which was never finished, is cut into the bedrock upon which the pyramid was built. Today, tourists enter the Great Pyramid via the Robbers Tunnel, dug by workmen employed by Caliph Al Mamun, around year 820. The Queen's Chamber is accessed via steep and very narrow ascending passage. At the upper end, the passage joins the Grand Gallery, which is 8.6 meters high and over 46 meters long, and slopes upwards leading to the King's Chamber. The only object in the King's Chamber is a rectangular granite sarcophagus, which is roughly finished and has a broken corner. Okay, welcome back. So they have more of an emphasis on the afterlife than the Mesopotamians. The Mesopotamians actually, in some cases, have zero afterlife. And then the, I've read other things where it was a really dark afterlife, but it depends on if you're a Zoroastrianism or Zoroastrianist or not. Um, so in Egypt, they have an emphasis on the afterlife. They're wrapping them in mummies. I'd like you to check out some of the Egyptian gods. You can find them on page 92 and 93 in your book, What is Ka? So take a look at that. It's online. You don't have to come in here and get a book. And that's pretty much, here we go. Where's the most fertile soil located? The Nile Delta. Which pharaoh unites Upper and Lower Egypt? Lego Menes. I meant Menes, sorry. Okay, um, why, which one's Upper and Lower Egypt? Why do they call it Upper or Lower Egypt? Do you remember this? Right, that is Upper Egypt because the water flows down to Lower Egypt and then out into the Mediterranean Sea. Excellent, okay, I hope you enjoyed today's class. Next time on World History, a video about pyramids. We'll see you then.